today we're going to look at a nice result involving matrices with Fibonacci entries. And along the way, we'll get to review some really important properties from linear algebra about the determinant. Okay, so let's first recall how the Fibonacci sequence is defined. So we'll take the seeds F0 to be 0 and F1 to be 1, and then we'll define the next numbers by the following two-step recursion. We have F n plus 2 is equal to fn plus 1 plus fn. So that should probably be familiar. So here's the first several Fibonacci numbers. So we have 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, so on and so forth. Now what I'd like to notice is that if we fill uh, matrices with Fibonacci numbers just by working across rows one at a time, we get this nice alternating property of the determinant. So notice the determinant of 0, 1, 1, 2 is negative 1. Those are the first four Fibonacci numbers, you know, written row-wise. Similarly, the determinant of 1, 1, 2, 3 is 1. The determinant of 1, 2, 3, 5 is negative 1. The determinant of 2, 3, 5, 8 is 1, and so on and so forth. So it seems like we have the following result, which we will prove. So for all n bigger than or equal to 0, well, the determinant of the matrix built by Fibonacci numbers follows this pattern. So in other words, the determinant of Fn, Fn plus 1, Fn plus 2, Fn plus 3 is equal to negative 1 to the n plus 1. So definitely negative one to the n plus one alternates, but why is that maybe the right exponent? Why should it not be negative one to the n? Well, let's notice over here, we're starting at the zeroth term, f zero is zero, and we have negative one to the zero plus one. Here we're starting with the first term, and we have negative one to the one plus one. Here we're starting with the second term, negative one to the two plus one, and so on and so forth. So that's a little bit of a explanation or motivation for why this is the right formula. Okay, so let's maybe see how this will work and we'll prove this by induction. Notice that our base case is totally taken care of because we did all of this exploration over here. So let's just make an induction hypothesis. So let's suppose for some k bigger than or equal to zero, we have well, the result holds for that value of k. So in other words, the determinant of f sub k, f sub k plus 1, f sub k plus 2, and f sub k plus 3 is indeed equal to minus 1 to the k plus 1. So again, that's known as the induction hypothesis. So next up, we'll want to consider the next case. And so when I say the next case, I mean, well, this matrix where we've replaced k with k plus 1, and we want to show that, well, it satisfies the same formula. Okay, so the next case here will be the determinant of fk plus 1, fk plus 2, fk plus 3, and fk plus 4. That's what you get if you replace all of the k's up here with k plus 1. And now we're going to apply the recursion to these elements that are in the second column. And that's kind of where this trick works. And obviously you could maybe just do this by straightforward calculation, but this trick will be useful because we'll extend it to prove something a little bit bigger later. Okay, so let's write this as fk plus one, and then here we have fk plus fk plus one by the two-step recursion that defines the Fibonacci numbers. Here we have fk plus 3. Here we'll have fk plus 2 plus fk plus 3. Okay, nice. But now let's notice that writing the matrix like that, there's an obvious factorization of this matrix. So note that this matrix can be factored as the previous matrix, well, times something. So let's write that down. So it's going to be the previous matrix, so we'll just copy that, times this matrix which is 0, 1, 1, 1. Okay, nice. So let's maybe talk our way through that. 
Well, notice if we were to do our standard rules of matrix multiplication by swiveling this first row into this first column, we would get an entry of fk plus one here. Furthermore, if we swivel this first row into the second column, we get the sum of the elements in that row or this object right here, which by our recursion simplifies to this right here, and then so on and so forth for the second row. So that means this factorization indeed works. But now we're gonna use the fact that the determinant is a multiplicative function. So in other words, the determinant of a product of matrices is equal to the product of determinants. So let's write that down. So we have determinant of A times B is equal to the determinant of A times the determinant of B. So that's something that you would generally prove in a linear algebra class. We won't prove that here. That actually makes the determinant into something called a homomorphism from maybe a group of invertible matrices to maybe just non-zero real numbers. So that's kind of interesting. Okay, so anyway, back to this. So that means the determinant of this product will be the determinant of this starting matrix times the determinant of the second matrix. But by the induction hypothesis, the determinant of the starting matrix is negative one to the K plus one. And then just by standard determinant calculation, the determinant of the second matrix is negative one. So in the end, we have negative one to the K plus two. But that's exactly what we wanted to finish this proof by induction. Okay, so maybe now let's look at what's going on with three by three or larger matrices. So like I said, we're gonna look at what happens with three by three matrices here, and we're gonna start with an example. And maybe that example will be one of the first three by three matrices. So let's look at the determinant of the matrix which has one, one, two. So that's the maybe not the first three, but after the zero. So the first, second, and third Fibonacci number. Next will be three, five, eight. And then next will be 13, 21, and 34. So let's do that determinant calculation and see what happens. Well, we're gonna do the so-called cofactor expansion in order to calculate this. So what is that? Well, we're gonna do a cross with the first row and the first column, and we'll get a sub matrix here, a two by two sub matrix. And we're gonna multiply the determinant of that two by two sub matrix, which with what got crossed. So we're here we'll have one times the determinant of the matrix 5, 8, 21, 34. Great. And then built into that formula is a minus sign. So we'll have minus one times. Well, we'll make the cross with the first row in the second column. And then the remaining two by two matrix, which is 3, 8, 13, 34. So 3, 8, 13, 34. And then finally plus two times the remaining sub matrix, which is 3, 5, 13, 21. And now, you know, this is just essentially like an arithmetic exercise to find these numbers. So I'd like to maybe recall exactly how you would do that. Just the two by two determinant formula says that this will be five times 34 minus eight times 21, and then so on and so forth for those others. So doing that calculation, we'll see that we get two for this first minus a negative two, that's the determinant of this second matrix, and then plus two times negative two. But then obviously if you were to do that sum, you would get zero. So that's what we have in the end. So in fact, that's kind of what's going on in general. We'll always get zero for the determinant. And we can actually prove this fairly easily. So let's write up a general three by three matrix. So we have Fn here, Fn plus one. Okay, and then Fn plus two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then the trick here is to take this third column and write everything in the third column using the Fibonacci recursion. So let's do that real quick. So we have this is the determinant of Fn, Fn plus one, but now we've written this 
last column, you know, expressing it with that decomposition. So Fn plus two is Fn plus Fn plus one. Fn plus five is Fn plus three plus Fn plus four. And then maybe Fn plus eight is Fn plus six, that should be, plus Fn plus seven. Again, just using that two-step recursion. But now there's a fact from linear algebra that says if you have a matrix where the columns are linearly independent, then the determinant of the matrix is zero. But a special case of that would be the matrix where you have one column is a linear combination of you know, the other columns. And that's exactly what we have here. Our last column is the sum of our previous columns. And that should tell us that the determinant of this matrix is zero. But that being said, to really see it using like a similar method to what we had on the last board, we can express this as the product of two matrices. So let's see if we can do that real quick. So I'm gonna write this as Fn, Fn plus one, Fn. And then we'll have Fn plus three, Fn plus four, Fn plus three and then Fn plus five, Fn plus six, Fn plus five. So that's not a typo. I really do have the same first and third column. Now let's maybe put a big parenthesis here because that's all inside of the determinant function. And we're gonna notice that if we multiply this by the matrix one, zero, zero, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, we get, well, the matrix that's right above. So again, if we were to like swivel this first column into the first row, or sorry, the first row into the first column and so on and so forth, we see that we would achieve exactly this up here. But then from here, you can finish it off a number of different ways. You can either calculate the determinant of this three by three matrix by hand and see that everything cancels. You can factor this one more time into a matrix that has a column of all zeros and then another so-called elementary matrix like this. Or maybe you can use the fact that if a matrix has repeated columns, then its determinant is zero. And look, we've got repeated columns. The first and the third column are repeated. So all of that is to say that we get a zero for the determinant of this matrix. And now you might say, well, what happens with a four by four matrix or a five by five matrix? But let's notice exactly the same thing will happen for really a K by K matrix as lo long as K is bigger than two. And that's because with this kind of layout, you'll always have a column be the sum of the previous two columns. Well, as long as you're away from the first or the second column. So you'll always have the third column as the sum of the previous two. The fourth column will always be the sum of the previous two. The fifth column will always be the sum of the previous two and so on and so forth. And so this result would hold maybe as long as you have larger than a two by two matrix. And all of this is built off of the fact that here we have a two-step recursion. And since we have a two-step recursion, well, we allow for non-degenerate two-by-two matrices, but a two-step recursion will not allow for non-determinate zero larger matrices. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you wanna get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpinmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.